Whenever the subject of Noah Antweiler, also known as the Spoony One, is discussed online, the conversation will almost always turn to his loss of popularity. Most discussion around him takes the form of informal opinion pieces, either written as forum posts or recorded on video, typically created by fans and former fans, and these follow a similar pattern. They state that the quality of his content has diminished considerably, and while they hope he will one day return to making his old style of content, they believe this change unlikely. These critiques often read like eulogies, and from them it is clear that his reputation has turned from that of an amusing reviewer to a mentally unstable rambler. So who was Spoonie, why was he so lauded, and how did he lose his fame? By the mid-2000s, internet video media had grown in popularity both in terms of creation and viewership. Though consumer-grade video production tools were limited at the time, amateur producers would use their limited resources to create content centered around media, especially video games and movies. The most notable example was James Rolfe, later known as the Angry Video Game Nerd, who began creating videos in 2004, playing an exaggeratedly angry character delivering harsh criticism for bad and sometimes obscure games released on the NES. This came at a time when internet speeds were generally increasing, making video more accessible as long as they were sufficiently compressed, and in fact, this compression made the quality of the recording equipment relatively less important. With no centralized location to host their content, these producers would purchase their own internet domains and upload videos there, where they could be accessed with proprietary video players or downloaded. Knowledge of these sites spread by word of mouth and on internet forums, where they gained significant popularity, However, the perceived entrepreneurial opportunities were limited, and so these videos typically stayed in the realm of hobbyists. As these videos were growing their audience, a few web designers and programmers were creating video hosting sites, where users could upload their content without the need for purchasing or designing their own website. For example, in February of 2005, YouTube was made public, and only three months later, in May, Blip.tv was released. Over the next two years, as these video hosting sites were being discovered, internet users would be inspired by content such as that of James Rolfe, and soon, they too were creating reviews of media that they perceived as being mediocre or poor, which they would upload onto these more convenient services. It was in this wave of content production that Noah Antweiler created his first videos. On January 4th, 2007, Noah released his first video, a review of the game The Adventures of Bayou Billy for the NES, referring to himself as the Spoony One. The content was derivative of other contemporary bad game reviewers, a point he admits in the opening of the video. You know, there's a lot of guys out there doing video game reviews like the Angry Video Game Nerd and Armake 21. I love those guys to death, and I'm not necessarily trying to steal their thunder. The core structure consists of himself improvising narration over footage of the game, interspersed with clips of himself talking or miming playing. So funkadelic. <laughs> anyway, Billy's got two attacks, a punch and a kick. The punch being a short range attack that doesn't hurt, and a kick, which is a slightly longer range attack that doesn't hurt. I, he's got it. This first video received significant attention at the time, and so he went on to produce more videos in a similar fashion, with what came to be his signature crude humor, hyperbolic rhetoric, and exaggerated demeanor. A dwarf boots him in the shins, and he's dead! Now I'm running in another one of these draconians, the ones who keep backing up! Come on! Come on! There's no way to fight- Oh, he just, like, pulls a 1-8, and I got a brick dropped on me! Fuck you! He also would create videos featuring audio CDs, where he would listen to them and occasionally pause them to deliver commentary. The general production quality on these videos would vary, but as he created more, he would begin to borrow editing traits similar to those used by people producing similar content. Hey, how in the hell do you get the game out of here? In these videos, he would sometimes allude to certain facts about his life, 
He referred to himself as a, quote, psychological mess, and noted that he had depression, was jobless, and had been living in his parents' house for all 27 years of his life up to this point. During 2007, he created a seven-part review of the game Final Fantasy VIII, which grew his viewer base considerably. This series was released over the course of six months, from April to October, though he would later return to expand this review with four additional videos. For those of you who can't speak Latin, the, uh, the chorus is saying, Real gay, real gay, sissy gay, 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 sissy gay, gay, but sex, astro glide, glory, ho, balls. His popularity would earn him a place among a body of other well-known reviewers, a place that would also serve as a refuge for his content to protect him from the attack that was about to occur. In early 2008, YouTube abruptly began suspending the accounts of numerous high-profile video creators, claiming that they were infringing upon copyright by including footage of movies and games. They also were flagged for having inappropriate content, though the definition of inappropriate seemed inconsistent. This was likely a move made by movie and game producers to prevent negative opinion about their work from spreading, as well as music licensors attempting to retain control of their intellectual property. This purge of content was highly visible, affecting some of the most popular creators on the platform. Noah was no exception to this problem. Three of his videos had been struck by copyright claims, and his channel was clearly in jeopardy of being suspended entirely like the others. In order to continue safely releasing content, he created a video in May urging people to visit his website, SpooniaExperiment.com, where he had subsequently been uploading his videos as an alternative platform. Uh, play at Bogart, suspended. Armic 21, gone, but not forgotten. And the latest casualty, uh, the angry video game nerd, also suspended for various reasons. Now, a lot more. I'll say that again. If you want to find me, go to my website. I'm going to put the link up there again at the end of this video. If you like these videos, I have more on my website. Plus, I have those hosted on an account where I actually get paid if you watch them. I was thinking of leaving YouTube anyway, because I don't get paid here. But this would not serve as his primary mode of content distribution for long. Approximately a year prior, another content creator named Doug Walker had quickly found success reviewing older movies such as the live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles films and Space Jam under the moniker of The Nostalgia Critic. In light of the channel shutdowns on YouTube, Doug had moved away from the platform to release content solely on his own website, That Guy with the Glasses, in April of 2008, with videos hosted on Blip.tv. Only two months after Noah voiced his concerns about his channel being closed, he was invited to host his content on That Guy with the Glasses alongside the Nostalgia Critic, making him one of the first to join. He began by uploading some of his earlier reviews to the site, likely so they could reach a new audience and be safe in case his YouTube channel was taken down, but soon, his core content was exclusively being uploaded to that guy with the glasses and his personal website, consisting largely of edited reviews. By utilizing online advertising, the website was beginning to make significant amounts of money, enough so that, when Noah lost his new job late that year, he opted not to look for another and instead devote himself full-time to producing videos. It was during this time that he met a woman named Scarlet, whom he would begin dating, and soon she would redesign his site and serve as webmaster while helping manage the forums. Over the course of 2008 and 2009, as that guy with the glasses gained increasing popularity, Noah would release some of his most beloved content while he improved his creation process, though it was still marked by a characteristic amateurishness which internet users found endearing or less important than the writing and acting. He quickly expanded to include other forms of content, including vlogs and commentary-style videos reminiscent of Mystery Science Theater 3000. His riffing on Phantasmagoria 2 and Ripper proved particularly popular. Do you ever sneak into your boss's office and start just pawing through his photos? You've got to stop it or I will! I'll kill you, you son of a bitch! Ah yes, the Christmas party. We all have fond memories of that one. I have a photographic memory of all the times I've been beaten up." However, his most appealing content remained his reviews, which would still be released on a semi-regular basis, sometimes less than two weeks apart. 
Eventually, the site grew so popular that Blip.tv made an advertising deal with YouTube so videos on that guy with the glasses could appear on the platform again, returning their content to the place from which they had originally fled. As time went on and more reviewers were added to the site's cast, Noah would participate in crossover episodes, which quickly had become a tradition on That Guy with the Glasses, and he became one of the most prolific crossover reviewers, often at the expense of his own production cycle. On January 19th, 2009, he made his first appearance on a comic review series entitled Atop the Fourth Wall, created by a man named Louis Lovehog, where he played Dr. Insano, a parody of the mad scientist trope who would eventually become an antagonist for Louis's character. Soon, Dr. Insano would make appearances in Noah's own work as a frequently recurring character and as a mascot. This was an early part of another trend for the site, where significant time in the videos was given over to skits, usually placed in the opening and closing of videos, and they helped to spread Noah's influence and raise his viewership even further. Noah's own videos, however, seemed to be mostly devoid of these skits and elongated cameo appearances, preferring to remain mostly dedicated to the central theme of his work, which helped him stand apart from the other creators on the site and exist slightly outside the group. But alongside this positive attention, the first signs of trouble were beginning to show. Throughout 2009, even as his popularity was growing, his attitude towards some of his viewers was becoming more antagonistic as he reacted strongly to negative criticism. The forums on his website became notorious for the way that less than favorable discussion of Noah would often result in a ban. In March of that year, he had created a Twitter account where he would sometimes react strongly to those who criticized him. In one tweet, referencing his forums, he mocked those critics, writing, quote, Wah, Spoonie's being mean and angry again and he's banning people. And he took my lolly. It's my site, ban meat, I'll do the fuck I want. Since Scarlet was often the one to issue these bans, she received much of the ire from the forums. Despite these issues, the discussion around Noah was still mostly positive. On December 16th, 2009, the online publication Mashable revealed its Open Web Award winners, which conducted online polls to select exemplary users of social media. Of the 50 awards, Noah won Funniest Person to Follow, but his reception was lukewarm. He wrote, quote, I debated with myself a long time on whether or not to post anything about this matter. I thought I might be feeding the trolls. But I think this needs to be addressed. First of all, thank you all for the extraordinary support and well wishes this year that helped me to win the Open Web Award for Funniest Person of the Year. I'm truly touched and honored by your support and hope that I'll continue to earn it. That said, the celebration is tainted a great deal for me because of a few bad eggs out there who continue to post cruel and hateful things on the blog and on the forums. I'm very, very upset right now. In fact, some of the comments lately have left me completely outraged. I've taken down my latest video and I don't intend to remake it because honestly, I'm not in the mood. I don't feel like being funny and you don't want to see me in front of the camera right now. These wanton emotional attacks on hard-working, innocent people have to stop. I don't mind if you come after me, in a way I open myself up for it. I'd prefer if you didn't insult me of course, but I can take it. Where I draw the line is when you make hateful, ignorant comments about my friends, family, and loved ones. These belligerent, crude comments have caused more harm than you know. It's not fair. It's not warranted. There's no call to ever say such awful things to anyone, and I'm tired of it. And I know that I'm only addressing a scant few people out there. I have thousands and thousands of fans, almost all of whom are astoundingly generous, kind, and supportive. I know you're good people, and I never get to thank these fans enough. It sucks that I have to stop the presses, drag the whole party down, and give these cowards the attention they don't deserve." Unquote. During 2009, Noah was beginning to diversify his content. In December of that year, he had begun a series entitled Wrestle Wrestle, where he talked in long-form, unedited videos about pro wrestling, especially TNA and WWE. These rants would consist largely of complaints about the most recent events, often being shouted emphatically and passionately. We're watching because it tells a story. <laughs> We're watching because we'd like to pretend. We'd like to escape for a little bit. But you might as well just... You're not even trying, are you? These videos would range from half an hour in length to an hour and a half. It's time for the Spoonie one! Yes! 
Wrestling Show. The popularity of these videos was far below that of his regular content, and people complained that he was beginning to create projects that distracted him from producing his core reviews. To help mitigate backlash, he gave this series its own website in August of 2010. One month later, Noah announced a contest based on his popular reviews of the Ultima series. In Ultima 3, one enemy was apparently the ground and the grass, which would spring up and attack the player, and so he put out a call for people to make short films based on the concept of fighting grass. How he handled this contest, however, was controversial. The prize for the contest was an autographed picture of himself, a fact that reflected his growing ego. Once the entries were given, he would re-upload them and collect the ad revenue. Any negative discussion of this was censored on his forums, but even so, this seemed largely not to bother his viewers. This contest was remarkably popular. Over 140 different videos were submitted by people eager to receive Noah's attention, and if the original video creators had qualms with Noah's handling of their content, it didn't show online. Soon afterwards, however, Noah's relationship with Scarlet ended. The details of the breakup are uncertain, but it appears that she was the one to break up with Noah, and he would later refer to her in an unfavorable way, even as she maintained her relationship with other That Guy With The Glasses creators. Despite this setback, Noah was becoming a regular at gaming and nerd culture events and conventions, including the Electronic Entertainment Expo, the Screw Attack Gaming Convention, and the Penny Arcade Expo, among numerous smaller ones, where he would often speak at panels. It was also during this year that he started another series, entitled Counter Monkey, in which he recounted stories of tabletop role-playing sessions. While mostly unscripted and unedited, these proved remarkably popular, though still nowhere near as popular as his normal videos. 2011 went on smoothly for his content as it grew ever more popular and his goal of becoming a film actor and comedian came closer to realization, but very suddenly, this run of good fortune would end. On May 11, 2012, Noah published a series of tweets to Jesu Otaku, another content creator on the website, which read in part, quote, You know, if things don't work out with you and Nash076, I'd be happy to chain you to a pipe in my basement and love you. My way. My way of loving someone is dirty, and painful, and ends in tears. He apologized to her shortly after. While this tweet went mostly unregarded for a month, it was referenced again by another person from the site by the name of Obscurus Lupa in an interaction between the two. Part of it reads with Lupa saying, quote, Seriously, I can't follow you anymore, dude. Noah antagonizes her by saying, Aw, Obscurus Lupa hates me now too. Gonna have to bust out the Adele playlist for this breakup. Lupa replies by saying, You joked about chaining Hope up in your basement and raping her. I got no sympathy for you. This negative attention was eventually made known by other creators on That Guy With The Glasses, then renamed to Channel Awesome. Noah grew passive-aggressive. He wrote, Is their punishment harsh enough for scum as loathsome as me? I really don't know what else I need to do. I've apologized. I've begged. Is it blood you want? Tears? I could rend my clothes asunder and wear sackcloth. Flagellate myself with a barbed whip? I can do it. I will. I mean, God, I made a bad joke. I'm sorry. I fucked up. Jesu Otaku, Obscurus Lupa, I'm sorry already. Please, take my penis. Burn it. I'm worse than Hitler. I should roast in hell if there was a pit deep enough for my sin. I beg forgiveness, knowing full well I wouldn't be worth pissing on if my face were on fire. In response, Noah was given a three-week suspension from Channel Awesome. While some accused Obscurus Lupa of dredging up a tweet made a month prior to cause drama, she reinforced her opinion in a blog post entitled The Uncomfortable Subject of Rape Jokes, where she states that there had been discomfort between her and Noah before. She wrote, quote, Was I offended? Yes. Did I only say something a month later? Yes. And it doesn't matter. That doesn't change what it was, and I'm standing my ground on this. I don't care if the person who said it is popular or more funny than I am. That doesn't make it right. It was a co-worker and a friend. Was this the only thing that set me off? Absolutely not. Was this the reason for what eventually happened? 
No, but this is what my deal was, and why I said what I said. Somewhere in Noah's rash of defensive replies, he attacked one of the fans of another creator at Channel Awesome, named Jason Pilara, who went by the name Lordcat. Shortly afterwards, on June 21st, 2012, Jason recorded his regular live talk show called Lord Cat Live, and in the second part, he talked extensively about his experience with and opinions of Noah. I've worked with Noah before, just like I've worked with many people with that guy with the glasses. I've had a lot of respect for people with that guy with the glasses, um, and I no longer respect Noah Antweiler. I used to respect him because I felt he put a lot of work into his videos. The man is possibly the single largest waste of talent I've seen in a very long time. And I am sitting here today telling you, Noah Antweiler, you need to give up. You are the second most loathsome person I've ever had the displeasure of knowing. You shit all over your fans, and then you shit on my fans. You think you're something, but you're a fucking nobody. You live out there in your fucking desert in the middle of nowhere, proclaiming you're gonna be this fucking actor somewhere, and you're too much of a bitch to move out to LA and follow your dreams. You're too much of a fucking pussy. You're a fucking coward. You're a loser. You're a loser. You wanna know why Scarlet left you? Because you're a fucking loser. You're lame. You got a small dick and you're fucking afraid of it. How about you act like a professional for once? You fucking retard. He also blames Noah for ruining career opportunities for him. But I think it's time the whole world, Spoonie, heard just how much of a fucking idiot you truly are. You and that other idiot, Joe. When you were at E3 that one year, and you decided to go up and down the hallways screaming about XCOM's betrayal, and Joe decided to ask people, can I choke you on camera? Yeah. And the guy so, was there playing it real time. Yeah. And, uh, and so we, I saw the footage, and there was one word searing through my mind like, like bolts of fire. And that word, betrayal! What? Betrayal! Betrayed me! This game sucks! It is nothing to do with XCOM! Nothing! Nothing! I think this is the birth of an uh, angry spoony. <laughs> nothing to do with XCOM! Like the first thing they did, they were like, okay, here's XCOM, I'm and not, it's gonna. I'm not with it. It's got aliens! And it's like, it's so. Guess what happened, Spoony? Guess what fucking happened? The whole gaming industry turned its back on me. Not you, not Joe, not Blistered Thumbs, me. I went to GDC the following year, Spoonie. I went to GDC the following year, and I had a chance to interview Notch, Mojang, Specifications, Minecraft. Had a chance. A fucking chance. He was hot then. That was going to be huge for this week in games. That was going to be huge for the stream. It was going to be amazing. And you know what happened? The representative at Mojang caught wind that we were going to interview Notch. And he stepped in. And he said, oh, I've heard of you. You're with that guy with the glasses. You're with Blistered Thumbs. And I tried to tell them, no, I'm not. But he said my name was associated with them. And he heard what you did. Making a fucking jackass of yourself at E3, you fucking moron. So they shot it down. And then word spread at GDC. Oh, I heard about you. You were the guy at E3. They thought I was the guy at E3 making a jackass of everyone. I was there trying to be a legitimate member of the business of the gaming industry, and I've worked my ass off to separate myself from you. Every time. You just don't get it. Every single fucking time. You act like a complete fucking jackass. It has repercussions for everyone you're associated with, and you don't give a shit. The day after Jason's stream, on June 22nd, an announcement was made on the Channel Awesome website. It reads in part, quote, After recent events, Noah, the Spoonie One Antweiler, and Channel Awesome have decided to part ways. Noah has made it clear that he wishes to pursue a course that is different from our own. We feel that with these different aims, it is better for Noah to be free to pursue his own goals unhindered by us. Unquote. 
Four days later, on June 26th, Noah revealed that he had been diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder, which compounded upon his already present heart troubles. On September 12th, less than three months later, he spoke about his departure in a commentary track for the channel awesome film To Boldly Flee, in which he had taken part. I suppose that I should uh, address the pink elephant in the room by talking about my departure from Channel Awesome, something that uh, has been kept mostly under wraps, most because there were some bad situations that, that stemmed from it. Uh, uh, the people kind of settled on the theory that Lupa got me fired somehow for making a joke on Twitter. I, I handled it very poorly. Knowing me, I'm the kind of guy who likes to touch raw nerves, and so naturally I started poking sticks at, you know, Lupa, so to speak. That was not what got me quote-unquote fired, and it didn't really stem, you know, my departure. It wasn't any... it wasn't like that. It didn't help, but that wasn't why. I guess the first thing I would talk about is there, there's kind of a financial aspect to this. And, and in many ways, I just didn't need Channel Awesome anymore. I, I just didn't. Uh, in the sense that it was a really one-sided relationship, but also on another respect. Their website uh, is so poorly designed. It really is atro atrocious. My videos are so buried beneath a nest of you know, layered, rooted menus that if you wanted to find my stuff, I think I'm under, like, blistered thumbs, side critics, and, like, I'm, I'm so far buried, you can't see what I'm doing. And I'm one of the more popular guys on that side, or I was. And the reason there were hurt feelings was because of the nut, nutso in, uh, situation on Twitter, where I really did start acting like a bastard and started, like, really slacking people online. You know, you just, you, you can't go doing that and not expect repercussions. And so... You know, that kind of spurred the discussion on where I wanted to go and how how much I was willing to... Basically, they talked to me and they said, you know, you're, you can't go, you can't, you know, you can't be this way on online. And I go, why? And I go, why? You know, I, I can say what I want. And so that was my being a bitch. But they were like, you know, you represent the company now. And we can't have somebody representing the company if they're going to act like this. And I go, fair enough. You know, I, say, I said, fair enough. I want to be me. I want to say what I want to say, even if that shit is offensive. And so, you know, even, even the situation with Lupa, I, it was the kind of thing where I, I wasn't really sorry for what I said. I, I was sorry the situation turned so ugly, but, you know, it wasn't even the kind of joke that everyone thought it was the kind of joke. But even so, if it was inappropriate... So what? You know, it's it's not the I, I, there was a fair amount of hip hop. Noah's departure from Channel Awesome didn't stop him from publishing videos, and he still would do crossovers with the members, especially Lewis. He continued to release on a fairly regular basis on his website and his YouTube channel. Shortly afterward, he began dating a woman named April, and by February, she had appeared in a vlog-style video with him, reviewing food items from a Japanese supermarket. <laughs> they carefully, they, they, <laughs> they blend the panda into a fine paste. They have to carefully extract its flavor nodules. And then they... <laughs> It, I, I'm guessing it just... However, by 2013, the release of his core content had slowed to a trickle. Throughout the year, he only released 11 reviews in his normal format, which was approximately half the number of releases compared to 2011, a concerning metric when his release schedule was already slower than that of other contemporary creators. He still had significant clout in the gaming community, however, and he would continue to speak at conventions and even conduct an interview with Richard Garriott, one of the leads for the Ultima games. Despite the slower release schedule, Noah had become remarkably active on Twitter, chronicling much of his life and his thoughts on social media. He became known for his strong emotional responses to provocation. For example, on July 18th, 2013, when some people disagreed with his middling reception of Man of Steel, he wrote, what would have made you happy? Ecstatic, high-speed masturbation on the movie poster? Self-flagellation? You wanted an opinion. But his largest change wouldn't come until the following year. On April 14th, 2014, Noah opened a Patreon campaign where viewers could pledge monthly amounts to support him in exchange for rewards. 
Some of these included an autographed photo at $15, a personalized voicemail message at $25, and a personalized movie riff video at $50. The strangest, however, was the $100 reward tier, the opportunity to watch a live-streamed session of Cards Against Humanity. Soon after launch, this Patreon campaign was a massive success. While the records for the first 11 months appear to be lost, it's known that, after only 6 months, he was receiving $5,000 a month on it. This amount was a threshold for him to create a feature-length movie, but when he made a video to announce it, he seemed more concerned than elated. Somehow, just, you guys have reached the, uh, the Patreon goal where uh, it was listed that I would start work on a movie. And I was just, I, I was blown away by this. <laughs> I, I didn't really envision like a, an in-character Spoonie movie when I was thinking of, of a movie. And um, hopefully that wasn't misleading. Maybe it was. And I'm not ruling it out. Uh, maybe you guys would enjoy seeing uh, something that was something, you know, something that I wrote and produced. Uh, especially since we're talking about like where in continuity this falls. I don't know. It, it, but it's one of the ideas that I might start kicking around. Uh, when will you see results? That's the tricky thing. I don't know. Once I kind of get an idea of uh, what kind of movie I want to do, I have to get uh, an idea of what my limits on budget are. The reception to this announcement was so negative that he disabled ratings and comments. One comment from a disappointed fan reads so. Well. It's happened. Donations aimed towards helping someone make internet reviews have now officially given them an excuse to make less reviews. In fact, the movie is a disastrous idea. It'll never happen, and Spoonie knows it'll never happen. Another wrote, I have taken my Patreon away because I have lost faith in your ability to deliver any semblance of consistent quality content. I haven't seen an increase in the quality of your videos. In fact, most videos are now vlogs that have basically no editing. And even then, the wrestling videos are completely unintelligible to anyone who hasn't grown up watching wrestling. And the Patreon goals? What happened to those? Are you telling me that you can't edit together a three-hour Cards Against Humanity for the people who are personally paying for your livelihood? Are you telling me you can't piece together a single DVD together in almost six months? All of this without providing any semblance of updates or feedback? Unquote. Three months of that year went without normal review videos, though he continued with other, less scripted content. This, however, was not enough to satiate his fans, and his Patreon began to steadily decline. What's more, people were growing more critical in the comments sections of his videos, but these appear to have been lost. This is because, in response to the negative criticism, he closed the comments on most of his videos on January 8, 2015. He would only release one review that year, divided into two parts. In May, he began irregularly livestreaming games, following in the trend of other content creators of the time, but the views on these would drop off as the months passed, and they would quickly cease to receive more than 10,000 total views. During these, he would sometimes grow angry at his viewers in the chat. By June of 2015, monthly pledges had dropped from $5,000 a month to $4,000. By the end of that year, it had plummeted to $2,500. His infrequent uploads also lost him much of his viewer base, and even when he uploaded full reviews, they would receive far less attention. Despite his decreasing viewer base, however, he would again begin to receive attention, though not for the reasons that he may have been expecting. Noah had become more active on Twitter as the months had dragged on, even as his release schedule grew ever more protracted. He had become known for feuding with others, including content creators, though he would occasionally mention that he was working on reviews that would, quote, not pan out. However, in mid-2016, as Donald Trump was emerging as the most likely Republican presidential candidate, he began tweeting even more frequently, railing against him and his followers. He would soon be releasing dozens of tweets throughout every day, and he grew even more angry when Trump was elected, growing more active on Twitter even as his content production reduced, to the point that there was a six-month gap in any content at all, from January to July of 2017. Unsurprisingly, his Patreon continued to slide downward. By 2017, he was making approximately $1,000 a month. This number was nearly halved by July. 
He began complaining about not being able to pay bills or the mortgage on his new house, which he had recently bought with April, but even so, no edited videos were produced through the entirety of 2017. By this point, he also had stopped seeing his psychiatrist. In May, someone alerted Noah to the fact that someone had been placing banner ads on his website, teasing him over his lack of content production. In response, he removed all of his banner ads on May 30th. His return in July of 2017 only included his live streams. Though these streams were one of his last sources of income, he was doing them far less frequently, with no more than four in a month through the rest of the year and into 2018. This degradation would soon reach its apex. On January 14th, 2018, Noah's Twitter account was suspended after he made a comment reading, Let this be an important lesson. Your health insurance doesn't give a piss whether or not I kill myself, or how many people I take down with me. Neither this comment nor his suspension was surprising, as he had been suspended only a few months prior, but as the days passed, people began to realize that this suspension may be permanent. As of the production of this video, the account is still suspended, with his tweets only surviving as screenshots. One month later, on February 16th, his forums also went offline. One viewer of his expressed the belief that this was due to an update on his personal homepage, which was incompatible with his forums. These forums, as of production, are also still defunct. The website itself has numerous non-functional elements, including a broken search bar, but the links to Noah's Amazon wishlist, April's Etsy store, a donation button, and the link to Noah's Patreon are still at the top of the site. With Noah's chief methods of communication with the outside world cut off, his hopeful viewers are left in limbo while his finances and apparently his mental state continue to degrade, with few answers to any of his fans' questions. While a few hold out hope that he will return to making content, almost all have abandoned it. His YouTube subscriber count continues to hover around 115,000, though less than a tenth of these subscribers seem to be watching any of his new content. No word on the progress of the Spoonie movie has been given for years. He now serves as an example to other content creators about how fame and viewership on the internet can be so powerful, but also how the goodwill of that viewership must not be taken for granted if one chooses to linger in the online space.